Yu-Gi-Oh! is one of the most popular trading card games in the world. Its rich history of gameplay and collectability has kept both players and collectors coming back to it for years. But what makes Yu-Gi-Oh! different from other card games? Why do small pieces of cardboard go for thousands of dollars? A combination of certain cards' rarity, collectability, and storied history drives their desirability so high that people are willing to spend unthinkable money on them. What are the most expensive Yu-Gi-Oh! cards ever, and for what reason? Today, I will take you through the top 10 most expensive Yu-Gi-Oh! cards of all time and explain to you why. Today's video, we will be giving away an expensive Yu-Gi-Oh! card in honor of the top 10 most expensive Yu-Gi-Oh! cards. Not that expensive, but we're giving it away an ultimate rare skill drain from the last OTS pack. All you have to do is like this video, be subscribed, turn on notifications. Let me know what you think about the top 10 most expensive Yu-Gi-Oh! cards. There's probably some other ones that I missed or that could be in here because there's so many super rare Yu-Gi-Oh! cards that have not necessarily sold or something like that, but they are very rare and probably more expensive than some of these. Let's hop into it and see the top 10. For our number 10 most expensive Yu-Gi-Oh card, we have Stardust Dragon Ghost Rare First Edition PSA 10. So there's a lot of different things we're going to be talking about in today's video, why they're expensive, what makes them expensive, and for this one, grading makes this much, much more expensive. For main set cards or cards that are printed in like a regular old set, there's lots of copies of them because they print so many boxes and even rare cards like Ghost Rares that are one every 12 boxes. There's a ton of them overall because they print so many different boxes. Like if you print 2 million boxes, you know, every one every 12 boxes, there's still a lot of copies of that card. So when you compare like main set cards to like prize cards where there's only like a hundred of them or something, there's no comparison in terms of the actual number of cards, making it basically impossible to be valued anywhere close to them. But when you get them graded and you look for the PSA 10 gem mint condition, there's less and less of them because not every card printed ever gets a 10. There's people use them and get damaged and all that stuff. So with the population report of like the PSA 10s, the BGS 10s and stuff like that, that increases the rarity of that specific card. It's still the same card. It's just in way better condition. So take this Stardust. It's only like a two to three thousand dollar card if it was ungraded but if it gets graded it is way more expensive and it's up here in our top 10. And of course, it's this expensive because it's an iconic 5Ds Ghost Rare monster, and Ghost Rares are, as I mentioned, one out of every 12 boxes. First edition of this set was not actually printed in booster boxes, making it even more difficult to find. So what is the value of this card? It was traded last year by Vintage Yu-Gi-Oh! for over $25,000, which at the time, it was a much more hyped market. It's probably come down quite a bit since then. And with all these very rare and expensive cards, there's not a lot of sales data. I haven't seen one of these sell for a long time, and that one was not technically a sale. It was a trade. So we'll be talking about more trades in the future of this list, but I would still safely assume that it's around a $20,000 card, maybe a little bit less than that. Still insanely expensive. Number nine is one that I think could also be a 10, but it's a very iconic monster, so I figured we would throw this one in. It's another main set card. We don't have a lot of main set cards in the top 10 because it's really hard for them to compare with stuff that's only been printed like 10, 20, 100 times versus thousands, as we mentioned in the previous. This card is Dark Magician Girl PSA 10 First Edition, one of the most iconic monsters in Yu-Gi-Oh!, and it has sold for upwards of $20,000 in the past. But because of all the prices coming down recently, it's definitely not worth that anymore. I would say it's around 13 to 14,000 currently. So it might actually be less than the Stardust, but I believe that it did sell for upwards of the Stardust price at one point. These two could really jockey for position. So nine and 10, I didn't feel like it was too big of a deal, which we put where, but they're both very iconic, very expensive. And this one's a little bit different from the Stardust because it's actually a lot easier to pull. It's only like every two to three boxes, you actually pull a Dark Magician Girl out of a hobby box of Magician's Force. So it's actually a lot easier to pull, but because of the iconicness and Magician's Force being actually a very rare set and pretty short printed, it seems, it's still very expensive. Now we move on to number eight, Gold Sarcophagus. The original tournaments of Yu-Gi-Oh! were hosted by Upper Deck before they got sued by Konami. I have a video about that. Go check it out if you guys want to see that. After that, they changed to YCSs or Yu-Gi-Oh! Championship Series. So that's what the newer prize cards are called. But before that, they had Shonen Jumps. Shonen Jump did like seven prize cards. It started with Cyberstein and ended with Dark End Dragon. Gold Sarcophagus was one. I think it was towards the end. It was like 2007, 2008. This card was actually really playable at the time. So it probably made people actually use these. So they got one of their very few prize cards, which if you check online, you can see that they estimate prize cards to be like somewhere in the 100 print ballpark, like only 100 printed total. Not just PSA graded, but in general. 
And for a card like this, the PSA grade really doesn't matter that much. A recent PSA 8 sold for $17,500. So you can imagine what one would go for at like a 9 or a 10. The condition doesn't matter so much for a card like this because it's so rare in general just to have one of them that actually having a gem mint 10 isn't that important. But still a crazy rare card and it just recently sold in PSA 8. So I'm assuming that a PSA 10 would be worth quite a bit more than a Dark Magician Girl or of course the Stardust Dragon in PSA 10. And 9 versus 9 and eight versus eight this blows those out of the water like a dark magician girl psa it's like two thousand dollars so it's not even close number seven a card i just mentioned cyberstein psa 10 this is a shonen jump prize card the first one ever printed in 2004 i believe you could get it for winning a shonen jump championship and they gave out a few more of these on upper deck day in 2009 so there was actually less copies of this and then they started handing them out in upper deck day right before they lost the rights to Yu-Gi-Oh. probably giving a jab at konami because they were mad so they were like yeah we're giving out more prize cards but this card in PSA 10 has recently been traded on Instagram twice actually for around $30,000. It's interesting because that gold stock was an 8 and it was 17,500 and this is a 10 it was around 30,000. So, I don't know necessarily if this would be less than the gold stock. I assume that the very first prize card would usually fetch a premium over the gold stock, but I haven't seen a gold stock 10. I don't even know if there is one. I'd have to check the pop report. I'm sure I'm popping it up on the screen right now so you guys can see how many PSA 10 9s and 8s there are. $30,000 and this was a very recent trade like in the last couple of months and it's verifiable through people that I know so $30,000 card pretty surely at this point. Next, we get into something that you've maybe never heard of. Number six is a common card. Yeah, I said it, a common card. It has no rarity. It's not super rare. It's not ultra rare. It's not secret, rare, not prismatic starlight. It's nothing. It's a common. This was the Kids WB Card of Sanctity. If you have not heard of this, it's a 2004 essay contest hosted by Kids WB. Yeah, all you had to do was write an essay and you could have like a very expensive card. We'll get to the price in a second. I believe they did 100 total. So 100 total cards of this common card. And at this point, we don't even know how many are left. Because it was a common, I mean, early on, nobody really cared about it. You know, it's not like shiny. It's not like, ooh, I need to keep this safe. It's just like, okay, it's a common card. And there are only a few that are known of to exist right now. There actually is a YouTube video where Mark Spyro Spears, who is a large uh, Yu-Gi-Oh seller and collector, he actually shows off this card and talks about some offers that he has gotten recently. And he got a $40,000 offer for this card. And this card is not Jim Mint by any means. This is what I really love about Yu-Gi-Oh. Some random card that you wouldn't think would matter at all ends up having a small print run and being extremely rare. And collectors figure it out, they find them and they keep them in their personal collections and show them off to people like us. Let me know what you think about this one specifically in the comments. Would you pay $40,000 for a common card? I know most of you guys are going to say no. I don't think I would pay that much either. But the rarity and the story behind this one is pretty cool. And it's like so random that you've probably never even heard of it. At number five, we have a card that was actually bought by a YouTuber recently. This was the Minerva prize card ultra rare. This is where we need to get into specifics about ultra rare prize cards versus super rare prize cards. Back in the SJC days, they just had one prize card. There was no different ultras versus supers. But when they moved to YCSs, they made it where there was an ultra rare prize card if you got first place, and there was a super rare prize card if you got second, third, or fourth place. These ultra rare prize cards are worth way more than the super rare prize cards. And the super rare prize cards are worth a lot. They're worth a few thousand usually. But the ultra rares usually 10x their super rare counterparts. And this Minerva was a playable card back in the day and is still nostalgic for a lot of people. This card is extremely valuable. JoJo's ASMR, if you guys have heard of his YouTube channel, also is a very interesting Yu-Gi-Oh. He's a big Yu-Gi-Oh guy. And he made a video on his second channel about how he purchased an ultra rare Minerva BGS 9.5. He really liked the card, and when he realized that there was not a single copy in Australia where he was from, he hunted it down and bought one from overseas. He ended up paying $40,000 US dollars for this card, so equivalent to the $40,000 offer Mark Spears got for his card of sanctity, but this one was an official sale. Like, I know the guy, and he actually paid that much money for this. That's where this list is difficult because some things you know actually sold, like you know the person paid that much money. Some things they said they were offered that much, which usually an offer for something like that is actually legitimate. They are probably going to follow through with it, but it didn't actually happen. It was never actually sold. They didn't actually send the money. So it's like, well, maybe they wouldn't have actually paid that much. So it's very difficult to put the list like this together. So I'm definitely giving priority to the card that actually sold for that much. There are probably other ultra rare prize cards that could be on this list because they're super rare, but Minerva is one of the most desirable ones, so I threw it in at number five. Now we get to number four, Tyler the Great Warrior. You may have heard of this one from previous top 10 most expensive card videos and other YouTube videos talking about the most expensive card ever or the rarest card ever. There are actually some other great YouTube videos talking about it, and I'm going to show you guys a clip of one right now. 
Uh, he says that the highest offer I ever had over several Facebook messages uh, exceeded a little, little over 75,000 US dollars. 75,000 US dollars, that's insanely expensive. Here's another situation where they were offered around $75,000, which is an insane amount of money. I think that was a while ago at this point as well. So we don't really know if it would sell for that much, but for this specific card being a one of, maybe like two or three if they printed a couple extra ones, like knowing Konami, they probably do have a couple extra ones of this card. I can't imagine this card not going for at least $75,000 because being this one of card with a very specific story has to have crazy value to high end collectors. Like imagine owning the only card in the world that was specifically given to one guy named Tyler. He got his own card made. I don't think he will ever sell that card unless he's, you know, desperate for money, which he would get a lot for it. <laughs> But if he did, this card could go for a ton. It could even be the most expensive card in the world, but we're going with what he has been offered um, allegedly right now of $75,000. Next up, another Shonen Jump prize card. This was not the first ever prize card. This was the Crush Card Virus. I believe this Shonen Jump prize card specifically goes for more than like the Cyberstein and the Gold Sark for a lot of reasons. Being first, you would think that the Cyberstein would be more expensive than something like this, but this Crush Card has iconicness for multiple different reasons. First of all, Kaiba used this card in the anime against Yugi, and it was very impactful in that specific duel, and it's super nostalgic. It's like he activated Crush Card, he destroyed all his monsters over 1500, and back in the day we were like, whoa, how do we get that card and how do we play with that card? Secondly, this card was actually insane when it first came out as a Shonen Jump prize card. People were actually using these cards in their decks because it was so good. They were winning an event. They were getting a one of like 40 cards ever because I think they released more after Upper Deck Day. So like at the time, there's probably 20 to 30 to 40 copies of them total. And people were using these cards. They were shuffling them. They were playing with them. They were letting other people touch them. It's crazy that they would even consider doing that. But this card was so good and it made your deck so much better. It was worth doing it. So these two things, coupled with the fact that it's just extremely rare, like the other Shonen Jump prize cards, kicked up the value of this one. And this card actually sold in PSA 10 for $80,000, and Solemn Yu-Gi-Oh! actually has a video on his channel talking about it. And not only was he just talking about it, he was actually there, so I'm going to show you guys a little clip of that video. What's being given for this singular prize card? 55,000 euro. Uh, additionally, he can, he'll get um, this free slabs. Dragon. PSA 10, Chaos Empower Dragon, and 9.5 Gaia in Wavy. Okay, so it's cash plus these cards, correct? Yes. And this would equal this $80,000 crush card. Approximately, yes. $80,000 for a Yu-Gi-Oh card. That's insane. Oh, but there's, there's two more. At number two, we have the Blue Eyes White Dragon prize card. Now, you might have heard of this card from Team Samurai X1's video. It was showcased by Jesse Cotton and Team Samurai when it was acquired and actually sold. So we have a price-ish on this card. This card was a Blue Eyes White Dragon Ultimate Secret Rare prize card for Duel Links in 2019. Supposedly there was only one first place version given away in this. In the video with Team Samurai, Jesse said he brokered the sale for someone to, I believe, Steve Aoki. He mentioned Steve Aoki in the video, but isn't it doesn't seem like he actually says it straight up. So I think it was to Steve Aoki for six figures. He doesn't say the actual name. At the time, he's saying it's the most expensive card in the world because they were talking about LOB Blue Eyes being $85,000. He's like, oh, it's easily more than that. This was sold for six figures, guaranteed. He didn't actually give the numbers, so I can't actually like put a number on it. Unfortunately, it would be great for this video because we could see exactly where it lands. And it might have actually landed at number one if I had known the exact price, but I don't. Regardless, I think this was the only Blue Eyes White Dragon prize card. Like that's an actual Blue Eyes. So this is insanely awesome and rare. And if it's actually a one of insane card, like it may or may not ever come up for sale again. So this is a really cool number two. And finally, at number one, we have the first edition Blue Eyes White Dragon from LOB. And you might be like, wait, when did this sell for more than six figures? And that was another problem I had with this list. So many of these things happen off of eBay, off of auction sites, and you don't actually see them publicly. You have to hear from other people that were involved or heard about it. I'm not going to go into the details, but a friend of mine was involved in this trade. It was like a trade and buy at the same time. And this Blue Eyes White Dragon, not PSA, BGS 10. So three subgrades of 10 and one of 9.5. If it wasn't a black label, which would have been all tens, which would be insane. This went for $159,000. There was some trade value and some actual cash spent. Insane. And as we said with the last one, it could have actually been more than $159,000, but we don't know because he didn't actually give the price away. 
And you might be saying, wait, what about the Japanese stainless steel Blackluster Soldier that I've seen before? That's the most expensive card, 10 million, 2 million, whatever you want to call it. There is no real evidence of this sale. There's like people saying allegedly it sold, but like I don't even know who was involved at all. So some of the stuff you might say, well, it was alleged here because you said that some person did this. Yeah, but I know most of these people or there's like a video on it or something like that. There's nothing on this Blackluster Soldier. It's just people saying, oh yeah, it, it might have sold for $2 million. So I don't know if that's real. It could have happened, but it was so long ago. It seems unlikely that someone would spend so much money on a Yu-Gi-Oh card before like the prices were even close to that. They would have spent like way, way, way more money than any card had ever sold at that specific time. So I don't know if I believe that sale or not, but it could be real. There are tons of other cards that probably deserve to be on this list. So let me know in the comments which ones that I missed and which ones should have made it. And if you enjoyed the content, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more epic videos like this. Shout out to TCG, Trusted Cards, Tonefo Show, Tomato Juice, Daxter, JT Cho, Clayton Fitzgerald, 87, Brett Palmer, Puffins of Doom, Ernesto, Deonda, Stanley, Mimigeko, Inamusa Jr. Barding, John Noland, and Anna Show. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. See you guys next time. Peace.